Ukraine has avenged Russia's bombing of its territories. In an unprecedented operation carried out by the main intelligence directorate of the Defense Ministry, Ukraine struck three combat helicopters in Russia's Samara city and in Moscow region on July 24 and July 21 respectively. Two Russian Mi-28 and Ka-226 combat helicopters were struck on the night leading to July 21 in Tomolino settlement in Russia's Moscow region on the territory of National Helicopter Manufacturing Center Mill and Kamov Joint Stock Company, an aircraft manufacturing enterprise that specializes in the development, production and repair of helicopters. The helicopters were hit as a result of sabotage activities by the main intelligence directorate. The third Russian helicopter was struck on the territory of the Kryaz airfield in Samara on July 24. The targeted helicopter was a multi-purpose Mi-8. Kremlin has not commented on the attack on its helicopters yet. It should be noted that Russia has stepped up its large-scale attacks on Ukraine's civilian infrastructure in recent months. Mi-28 and Ka-226 helicopters are widely used in Russia's war of aggression in Ukraine that started in February 2022. Threats to Britain's security from Russia's aggression against Ukraine are not a distant possibility. Therefore, the country's armed forces must be strong enough According to the former NATO Secretary General Lord George Robertson, we need to recognize that the threats to our country and our citizens are no longer theoretical. They are no longer a distant possibility. They are alive and well in Ukraine today, where Vladimir Putin's Russia has brutally invaded and sought to occupy a peaceful neighboring independent nation state. Robertson emphasized during his speech in the House of Lords. He said that the stakes in this matter are high, and it is necessary to look at the depraved conduct of Putin's occupiers in those parts of the Donbass and Crimea that they presently and temporarily occupy. Earlier, the commander of the British Armed Forces, General Sir Rowley Walker, emphasized that his country needed to prepare for war in three years. According to Walker, this need is in particular because Russian President Vladimir Putin will want retribution against Western countries that support Ukraine in the war. The British general also clarified that the threat comes from China, Iran and North Korea. That is why you get to this point by 2027 to 2028. This convergence may have reached some sort of mutual singularity and your ability to deal with them in isolation. A specific crisis that can be managed by the rules-based system, I think, is significantly diminished, Walker said. At the same time, he clarified that Britain is not on an inevitable path to war, but it urgently needs to rebuild its ability to deter future wars. NATO officials and generals have repeatedly stated that Russia could attack the alliance. They shared their predictions about such a threat. In particular, Bundeswehr Inspector General Karsten Brewer said that Russia may be ready to attack NATO territory in five to eight years. During this period, they are likely to gather a sufficient number of personnel and weapons. Russia has developed a new system to detect Ukrainian drone operators, Russian state media reported, as the race to produce more effective battlefield drones heats up, Newsweek reports. The Cobra system looks outwardly like a game console, but has the ability to track Ukrainian drone operators and pinpoint their coordinates on a map in real time. The system's developer, named only as Stanislav, told Russian state news agency RIA Novosti. The Cobra is already in testing and will then head for experimental combat operation on the battlefields of Ukraine, the news agency reported. The plan is for the system to then be mass-produced, according to RIA. The nearly two and a half years of full-scale war in Ukraine has spurred unprecedented drone innovation, with both Moscow and Kiev battling it out with uncrewed vehicles in the air, on land and in the waters of the Black Sea. Ukraine has used unmanned aerial vehicles or UAVs in many different roles along the front lines. The airborne drones cover nearly every aspect of combat, from helping out with reconnaissance to suicide drone strikes and guiding artillery fire. Russia has also plugged away with its drone programs. Moscow and Kiev are thought to burn through hundreds of drones each day. Upgrades are constant, 
and can include increasing the range of UAVs, the accuracy of strikes, how silent they are when approaching a target, being able to operate better during nighttime missions, or being resistant to jamming efforts by the enemy. Kyiv's first-person view FPV drones have become infamous for providing dramatic footage of the conflict while they help coordinate artillery strikes or careen into Russian armored vehicles. Mykhailo Fedorov, Kyiv's Minister of Digital Transformation, heading up Ukraine's drone efforts against Russia, told Newsweek in December that they work sometimes even more efficiently than artillery. FPV drones are indeed a tech revolution, even though the tech itself is quite easy. But it turned out to be very efficient, Fedorov added. Ukraine's drone operators are one of the highest priority targets on the front, RIA reported, adding the Ukrainian teams piloting the aerial drone fleet are extremely difficult for Russian forces to detect.